that already prayer. Praises be to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I give you thanks and praise for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. I give thanks for a mind to pray, a heart to seek your face, and authority to bring my members into subjection. I thank you for this moment and the opportunity that each day brings. I know that each day is special and I am empowered with unlimited potential. There are no ceilings on my life, obstacles that cannot be overcome, or barriers that can stand in my way. In fact, this is the greatest day of my life, and I am free to exercise all of the gifts and talents you have blessed me with. My hopes and dreams can manifest today, and I approach this moment with great expectation for miracles, breakthrough, and deliverance. I stand before you, Lord, naked, offering no excuses or justifications for my shortcomings and weaknesses. I come, Lord, seeking your standard and not those of men. I pray that you will forgive me my sins, known and unknown. Forgive every thought, deed, action, motive, or intent of my heart that is not lined up with your word, your will, or your calling and purpose for my life. Please forgive secret faults and uproot any seed of discontent that has been planted in my life. Forgive me, Lord, if I have held back the tithe, and give me a heart to restore every person that I have wronged. Just as you forgive me, I forgive those that have wronged me, and I let go of any art, bitterness, or ill will that I have held in my heart. I will not allow sin and bitterness to cut off the flow of blessings into my life. I repent right now in the name of Jesus, and I receive the power of the blood to cleanse me from all iniquity. I come before you, Lord, with a heart that is after your own, and a mind that has stayed on you. I thank you, Lord, for saving me from myself and the consequences of sin. I surrender, Lord, and give you total and complete reign over my life. I willingly submit to you in thanksgiving and praise. I thank you, Lord, for the relationship and fellowship that you have allowed me to share with you. I thank you for every moment, prayer, word, and opportunity to gain revelation and understanding concerning you. Forgive me for the times I have taken you for granted or moments where I have allowed my focus and discipline to slip. I choose you, Lord, and all of your benefits and denounce all ties and fellowship with the world. I have no place in the world and denounce everything that it offers. You have given me a choice, Lord, and I choose to be in covenant with you. I have crossed the line of no return, and I will not look back. Each day I am getting more and more like you and growing further and further from this world. My reality in Christ is more real than what my natural eyes behold, and I know that you are not a million miles away.
break our walls down, Lord. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Spirit, break out. Say.
You can do all things but fail Cause you've never lost a battle No, you've never lost a battle And I know, I know You never will Jesus, you never will
Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you hear us when we call, Jesus. Perfect in every way. That's who you are. You're all I want. Oh, yeah. I'm caught up in your presence. And I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. And I'm not here for blessings. No. Jesus, you don't own me.
stockings out front. Also, um, this is going to be a week of preparation. So look for a phone call because we need your commitment. We need to know who's going to be here and who's going to be working. And those of you that are online, uh, we need your commitment. We need to know if you're going to be here and what area that you want to be working in. Because as you know, on Christmas, we all always have volunteers coming from all over to help. Amen. And so we want to make sure that you have a place to be. Uh, directions and instructions uh, will be given out to all of those people that are coming in from the outside. So they will already know what they're supposed to do, which is to follow one of you guys' lead. Amen. And so we want to be prepared for that on, uh, let's see, Christmas is the next week. So next Sunday, we will be having our ugly Christmas sweater. Amen. So wear your ugly Christmas sweater next week and our cookie exchange. So the cookie exchange, you bake some cookies or buy some cookies and we just exchange cookies. Amen. So we'll have your ugly sweater, uh, Christmas sweater contest. And usually there's a prize for whoever has the ugliest Christmas sweater. Amen. And uh, so our ugly Christmas sweater and our cookie exchange will be next Sunday. Now, why I'm we're doing some things this way, because I started calling people and taking a survey and I asked the question. I said, OK, Christmas is on a Sunday this year. How many of you realize that Christmas is on a Sunday? <clears throat> Huh? How many of you prepared to come to church on Christmas morning? See, there we go. That's the whole reason that the season is, is Jesus's birthday. That's the whole reason for the season. You know, and if any day we're going to celebrate him, that's the day. So because of my response, we are going to have our ugly Christmas sweater uh, Sunday, next Sunday. Do our cookie exchange next Sunday. Amen. We will have uh, <clears throat> we will have some different Christmas things going on this next Sunday because I understand people want to spend time with their families uh, and that they have different things to do. But you know what? As we grow, we have to do better. As we grow, we have to do better because it's all about him. We will have service online on Christmas, so you can tune in in your pajamas. But enjoy it this year because I believe this is the last year it's going to happen. Amen? Enjoy it because we have to, in this last day and time, we have to be so about doing what God has called us to do. It's not about anything else other than drawing close to him. And so it's time to get the fire lit up underneath some of us. Uh, Sister Bobby and myself and Desiree went to the women's conference at CHOP. And we had an awesome time. And you know what? Y'all need to, we need to get some matches and set y'all's butts on fire. Because we've got to get excited about what God is doing. God never stopped doing anything through COVID, through anything. God remained the same. But it was us. And that was a trick of the enemy to slow us down and to stop us. But we have to move forward. Amen? We have, look, I don't want to go by myself, but if I have to go alone, I'm going alone. Because we've got to get on fire and excited about what God is doing again. Or else you're going to lose your soul. You're going to lose your soul messing around trying to be comfortable. God never called you to be comfortable. He never called you to be comfortable. But he called you to love him, to know him, and to serve him regardless, no matter what. Because hear me, when you get sick and you call on God, he answers. When you need money and you call on God, he answers. When your child is hurt, you call on God, he answers. When you're about to lose your mind, you call on God and he answers. He answers you every time. And God calls on you to serve him, to be obedient and to love him. And we got every excuse in the world. You know what? It won't work for me anymore. And as long as God has called me to tell you, it's my responsibility to let you know. You got to get off your butt and get back on fire or you're going to miss God. There's no other way to say it. If we don't get right, we're going to miss him. If you don't get dedicated, you're going to miss him. Be faithful to God. If you ain't faithful, if you're faithful to your God, you ought to be more faithful to God. Stop being so faithful to the world. This world cannot save you. It has nothing for you. But God has everything you need. Every time you need it, right on time when you need it. We've got to be faithful to God. 
I know y'all think this girl's just hollering at me. You know what? Because it's important. It is very important. And I don't know how else to tell you. The rest of the world is going along and moving up and growing. And y'all sitting here still trying to figure out what's what. I'm not going to be left behind for anyone or for anything. Me and God are a majority. And you have to look at yourself. Look, you and God are a majority. And don't allow life, situations, or circumstances to stop you from being all that God has called you to be. Look, the promises that God made you, some of y'all sitting in these seats are millionaires. And you done forgot what God said about you. Huh? Some of you are millionaires. And you done forgot what God said about you. Some of you are blessed and have your own businesses. And you forgot what God said about you. Some of you are prosperous and you have forgotten what God said about you. Some of y'all struggling with your children and other things in life. Why? Because you forgot what God said about you. It's time to wake up and remember what God said about us so that we can move forward in the kingdom of God, so that we can grow in the things of God. Look, we're better together than we are by ourselves. Huh? We're better together than we are by ourselves. And so it's about coming together. The word of God says this, that one can put a thousand to flight and two could put 10,000 to flight. If each and every one of us in this room just yoked up and done what we're supposed to do, we could tear hell down. We could tear the enemy's uh, camp up. We could stifle what he's trying to do to our children and our relationships and our marriages. I don't know about you, but I'm just a little bit tired of it. See, when you go and you experience and you see what God is doing and how he can do, you come back and you wonder, Lord, what's going on? You got a light of fire. He said, you got a light of fire. So if I walk up to some of y'all with a liar, a lighter behind y'all's butt, I'm just trying to give you a hint. Huh? You need to be lit on fire. You got to get excited again. There used to be a song. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, moving with the Holy Ghost. God wants our souls to catch on fire again. Huh? I'm not saying that I'm not saying that you don't have no fire. But some of y'all got a blazing flame and some of y'all got a flick of the bit. It's time to be on fire again. I'm telling you, in our children's church classes, my babies are having a great time growing and they're on fire. They're learning. Huh? They are learning and they're telling their parents about it. Why? They're learning what the full armor of God is. They're learning how to walk out and protect and to do. They're learning what it means to use the full armor of God. We've all got to do it. You know, God, uh, time out for excuses. This is time out for excuses. There are no more excuses. It's time for us to get right with God. Because this world is short. This time, our time is short. I'm telling you, when you know the things that are going on in the world and the things that the government is putting into place and the things that they're trying to do to your children and the things that they are doing to you and you don't even know it, and the church wants to sit on our seat and do nothing and just sit there and say, well, I'm going to be okay. Guess what? God still requires you to do your part. He still requires you to do your part. And so we've got to get to the place that we won't just sit there and let life pass us by and wonder, well, what, uh, what happened now? I didn't know about it. Guess what? Get in your word. God will tell you about it. He'll show you what's happening. He'll show you what's coming up next. And we got to be prepared as a body. Y'all think COVID uh, shut y'all down and, and made everybody figure out well, what's coming next? Are you ready for what's coming next? we got to be ready for what's coming next. And you can't do that all over the place and call it on God when you need something. If you are always ready, you don't have to get ready. And we've got to stay ready so that God can use each and every one of us. Because in this last time, guess what? It's not, God needs to use everybody. That person in the seat, that person back in the back, that per the church, he needs to use everybody. 
And if you won't listen, don't think God will wait on you because he will get somebody else. He will move somebody else's heart. And so I'm saying all of that to say this. Come on, y'all. We got to do, we got to do better by God. We got to be more faithful to God, more dedicated to God. God is not a vending machine God. You don't get to heaven when you want him and, and not when you don't. He's not just there for your pleasure. We were created for his pleasure. We got to be faithful to God. So now that I done got off my train of thought because my heart is just heavy about that. Because God, look, you guys have to understand this. It's y'all's faces that God shows me and Pastor Ron in the middle of the night. It's your faces that come before our minds in the middle of the night. That keep us up all night crying and keep us up all night praying. And it's our responsibility to tell you, if we don't do something different, you're going to miss it. And so hear me. You hear, hear my heart. I'm not angry with you, but I'm frustrated about what the devil's doing to you. I'm frustrated about you not seeing what he's doing to you. I'm frustrated to the fact that you're allowing it to happen. And then you want God to fix it. And God has already told us what we need to do in his word. He's already called us to be faithful. He's showed us what we need to do. God will do the rest. Stop trying to figure it out for yourself. And let God have his way in your life. That's all he asks you. God will do the work, but you got to just trust him and be faithful. That's all he wants from you, to be faithful. Because through it all, God never changed. He never changed his position. When you were sick, he was still God. When you were broke, he was still God. And some of you let your pride get in the way and couldn't receive what God had for you. Because it didn't come the way you wanted it to come. Hear me. We better wake up and pay attention. Or the fire is going to pass right through you. Burning out everything that God intended for you to have. And the enemy is going to wreak havoc in your life. If we don't pay attention to what God is saying. I woke up in the middle of the night last night. I slept with my, with them little ear things on, them little white things you put in here. And when I was listening to the word of God, when one stopped, I switched in the middle of the night. I did that three times. Because I was listening to the book of Deuteronomy. And God was telling me about the order. And that there has to be order in the house of God. And it is not just for me and Pastor Ron. It is for everybody. Amen? Me and Pastor Ron can't save you. All we can do is preach the word and do what God tells us to do. But you have a part in there. Each and every one of us have a part. And you have to do your part. Or you're going to stand on the outside and say, watch everybody else say, I was blessed in the city, blessed in the fields. Huh? Blessed in the coming, blessed in the going. Why did it over? Why did it skip over me? Because in these last days, God's not going to leave everybody, huh? He wishes that all souls would be saved, and He doesn't want to leave anybody behind. But you can stay behind on your own. And so, hear my heart. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. And we're up on our knees when you couldn't even imagine we're up on our knees for you. Why? Because that's what God called us to. But you know what? God spanks all of us sometimes. Huh? No whooping like a whooping from the Lord. And so as God spanks me, guess what? If he's spanking me, I'm supposed to give it to you. Because I don't like getting whooped by the Lord for the lives that I'm responsible for, that God is holding me accountable for. And I don't want to hurt your feelings, and I don't want to say, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and don't do this, and sister, where you you need, you know what? Time out for that. So you're going to get it like God gives it to me from this point on, I promise you. Like it or not. Huh? Like it or not. Tough love. It takes tough love. But it's because I love you, and it's because God loves you. And so it's so important that we begin to line up with the word of God. Get your eyes off of each other. Get your eyes off of me and Pastor Ron and get your focus back on God. That's what God is calling us to this morning. 
And I, I got here, I was talking about preparing for the outreach. And part of that is become, because we have so many other churches that we have to tell no. No, you can't bring 50 people. No, you can't bring 35 people. Why? Because my own people here can't govern you because they won't show up. And so it's, it's not about the people. Because as many as people called, everybody's not called to this church. You can come and visit. Yeah, you can come and help. And, and, and many of them want to stay. But God didn't call you here. He called you over there. You were just supposed to come and help at this time. Because if, if we continue to let everybody else come, you will never do what God has called you to do. You will always let somebody else do what God has called you to do. And so this morning, hear my heart. We need to be better. God wants us to be better. How, how many, what time does church start? 1030. What did I always say? Hadn't told you this in a long time. If you can't be early, or uh, can't be on time, be early. God is never late when you call him, not once. Not once. We come into the house of God because we love him. Let's do better. Let's give God our best. Amen? And this outreach ought to be an awesome outreach. We have people that are going to come and cut hair. We have people that are going to uh, be, bring toys and we're going to be giving gifts. We're going to give a hot meal. We're going to have clothes. That's something else that I wanted to mention. If you have extra clothes, then now's the time to clean out your closet. Y'all got this week. Because by Saturday, everything that you need to pull out of your closet so that we can be a blessing to somebody else, we need to have it this week. Hear me? How many of y'all got some clothes you can donate, some shoes? Huh, that you're tripping over? Even the kids. We need you to bring all of your clothes and stuff this weekend so that we can give them away. Because there are people that are waiting for them. Amen? Guess what? The need of the body has never changed. The need of the body has never changed. And even while you guys don't know and all the things that you don't get involved in do, and, and do, who do you think does it? Me and Pastor Ron. Guess what? It's not about me and Pastor Ron. Sheep don't make sheep. Hmm? Or shepherds don't make sheep. Sheep make sheep. And so it's important that we all line up and get where we need to be. Take your rightful position in God. Do you know what God has called you to? Come on, how many of y'all know what God has called you to? If you don't, get busy and you'll find out really quickly. Nobody is trying to stifle you from doing what God has called you. We want to help you, but you at least got to want to do it. We can't make you do it. And so we want to close out this year with an awesome time in the Lord. How many of you guys have something to do for New Year's? What's your plan? You got, you got plans? How many of you guys would, would you guys like to do something for New Year's? Huh? Not too many people want to do something for New Year's. Huh? Then at that time of year, that's when you pray out the old year and you pray in the new year. Whether you're at home or you're somewhere else. But one thing that God says is forsake not the assembling of yourselves. And you have to hang around like-minded people. The people at the club ain't like-minded. Or they would be somewhere praying. Didn't say they wasn't saved because they probably are. But God said be with like-minded people. And that goes for us every day of our life. So let's be prepared to end this year right. We are going to pray out the old year and pray in the new year. And if you want to be there, you're welcomed. And if not, wherever you are, I pray that you are praying at midnight. Pray out the old year, pray in the new. Amen? And so let's prepare our hearts and our minds. We wanna, I want to lift this atmosphere. I'm not trying to bring you down, but I, you got to know the reality of what God is saying and what he's doing. And he didn't call me to just get this for myself and keep it. He called me to get it and give it. 
And so you guys will hear from us this week about the area that you're going to be working in. I think we'll actually have some people here doing haircuts and that kind of stuff. Uh, Brother Derek, those cars, you know what, uh, get your plan. <laughs> but, you know, there are certain people that you just know, that just know what to do. Well, we're calling you now because we need you to know what you're doing this year. Amen. A lot of things have changed. We used to get, get truckloads of turkeys. You can't get a turkey unless you want to pay $60, $70 per turkey. So a lot of things have changed, but you know what? God says, don't let that stop you. I always meet the need. And so we will have our food boxes. They won't have turkey, but they will have chicken. They'll have everything else they need. They'll have the toys. They'll get the clothes and everything else. It's about us being obedient to do what God says. Regardless to what the world is doing, God will make a way so that the need is met. Amen? Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we want you to just continue to open your hearts and your minds. Those of you that are online, we want you to stay prepared and be ready also. Because God never called us just to stay online. Online is a tool, and we'll continue to do it. Why? Because we have people from all over in different places that are watching the messages. And so if you consider yourself a part of Heart for the World, or this is what you're watching and you're contributing to, then this is for you too. Don't just be stuck there sitting in a seat. But let's be about doing what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. So right now, I want you guys just to prepare your hearts and your minds for the word of God this morning. Pastor Ron, that has been very unexpected. But my children, can we all line up at the back door? We're finishing out our series on the armor of God. And so today they get to do the last piece of the armor, which is the sword of the spirit. And so I'm going to ask you today, just in this process while you're in the service, put your armor on. And check your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Tamsin just going on to finish out the service. Amen. Hallelujah. For he's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. We magnify you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives, how you're speaking to our hearts. Have your way. Go with me this morning to the book of Acts, 17th chapter, <clears throat> and the 28th verse. We're going to talk about the essence of Christian living. Jesus' grace giving. 1728. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your poets have said. For we are also his offspring. Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your presence. Be glorified, God, and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. You may be seated. See, for it's in him that we live and move and have our being. It's in him that what? Salvation comes. And after we're saved, we want to grow. We want to grow in our salvation. And as we begin to grow in our salvation, God begins to sanctify us. See, some people want to be saved. They, they want to be saved from
walk and talk differently. See, it's about us being different. As I said, in him we live, in him we move, and, and have our being. God wants us to grow up in him. See, but then, he, then, then after we get saved and after he begins to sanctify us, he moves us to a place and he wants us to do what? He wants us to move into a place of pressing towards the mark of the prize. Because some of us say, I don't do what I used to do. And I know that I know that I'm saved, but are you pressing? Pressing towards the prize. Pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling. That's sonship. God wants you to move to the place of sonship, not just merely being a child of God, but operating in sonship, becoming a son, walking into maturity. Oh, somebody, God's speaking to you.
God wants us to be good stewards. See, because some people they don't they don't know how to handle their money. They don't want to know how to handle their stuff. And they're constantly looking for relief only because they didn't do what God said for them to do. God wants us to give and God blesses us to give more because he gives seed to God wants us to get to the place that we can give it to the Lord. In 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, in the message Bible, in the message Bible, it says, you are familiar with the generosity of our master, Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he gave it all away. In one stroke, he became poor, and we became rich. He gave it all away. He stepped out of glory so that we could be rich. For we know the grace of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, is in him that we live. You see, that's the kind of God that we have. He wants us to do what? Have the Zoe kind of life. How many of you are really living the Zoe kind of life, the God kind of life? Too many of us are distracted and filled with other things that, that bring us down. And rather than having joy, you walk around depressed. You walk around bothered. You walk around without peace. God wants you to have peace. This time of the year, many people lose the peace. Why? Because they can't keep up with the Joneses. Because they can't keep up with the expectations of the world. Or even sometimes of just their family. God wants us to have the Zoe kind of life. See? The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Christ, he comes in what we might have life. That's the Zoe kind of life. Huh? The God kind of life. Huh? And that life, more. God wants us to get to the place that we can live in the Lord. But guess what? You must become a good steward of what God gives you. We must operate from this standpoint. Satan comes to kill your soul, to destroy things in your life. When he has done his worst, Jesus comes and does his best. You just have to choose to surrender. You have to choose to believe God. Jesus said that I've come that you might have eternal life. And God wants you to have that eternal life. And it will what abundantly. That means it's time for you to break off the shackles of your life. That means that, 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 that you'll stand up and proclaim what God is saying. That means you'll open your eye and recognize when the government or some other entity is trying to deceive you. When the devil is using somebody or something to bring you to a place of bondage, God is saying, come out. When he 
city care that you might have life and that life more abundantly that's even healing your body. But even in that, some people are trying to do it their way rather than trusting the Lord. So many times God has showed me lately that he's in control. There were things that I thought were going to fall one way or come this way or come that way. And every single time, if you will, God said, I'm in control. He said, just trust me. But too many people don't trust the Lord. They trust themselves. They trust what they can put their hands on. And when it doesn't work out, they still trust themselves. But I'm telling you, he wants us to operate in faith. Yes. And if we're going to operate in faith, we need to operate in obedience. Mm -hmm. See, the life of God and the blessing of God on your life deals with your time, your talent, your gifts, your possession, and your money. See, five is the number of grace, and Jesus, grace giving is, is, in other words, if you will, God wants to give you uh, an increase in your time, increase in every dimension of your life. And guess what? The money that you chase, the money that you hold on to, it's the lowest form of prosperity. But we put the greatest value on it. You'll turn flips, you'll twist and shout. You do whatever. And he says that's the lowest form of prosperity in the kingdom. See, money is what everybody else is about. But in the world, the focus is on how money, how much money they can get. And I get it. Rather than how much Jesus I can get. We need to have Jesus. And we need to come to the place that we will operate from this standpoint. That means that this is that. That I'm going to choose to move forward in Christ. That I'm going to choose to walk to him. To talk to him. I'm going to choose sometimes that I'm going to be inconvenienced. You know, when you want something bad enough, how bad do you want the Lord? Hmm? You put a commitment on it. I know God who just recently, you know, he's he, he's just recently started playing up. But a few years ago, he, 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 he was with his pastor and some other people, and the pastor was trying to learn how to play golf, and they went after him, and it was a fiasco. The pastor said, no, I'm not going to play with y'all. I ain't going to come after with y'all. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. And they laughed, and they all kind of put it down for some years. But just recently, decided, hey, I'm going to play golf. And um, lo and behold, the guy did really do pretty good. But what is it that he did? He does something. He plays golf every single day. Uh, now, now, I don't want to focus in on the golf, but I want you to understand that his contentment was that I'm going to be good at this. I'm going to get better at this. And if he doesn't Do that. Do you really pray? Do you get in the book? 
more important than you read the book you read? Or do you read it like it's a newspaper? You read it like it's just a history book telling you stories. Let me tell you something, church. The world is going to hell. And everywhere you turn, there are manipulations. They're trying to give you stimulus of fear. You're not acting right? Okay, we don't make Russia say that they might be the first responder with a nuclear weapon. Or, uh, or, you know, this is happening over here. Or this is happening over there. All of that is a distraction. Because if they do that, they need to do about it anyway. The question is, are you ready if it happens? Or if the United States goes off and does whatever. You see, we got to understand that this world or the government is corrupt. So you can't believe everything you hear, hook, line, and see. But you need to get in the book and make sure that your heart, your mind, your soul is ready so that no matter what comes down the line, you're not rocked. You're not moved. Matter of fact, do you live such a way that your children can find their way if something happens? We got to teach them. Why do you think children's church is important? We need our musicians back in place, functioning and doing. But guess what? That takes commitment. That saying, look, we're going to set some things aside so that we can do it. Church, it's time for us to move. Why? Because that's a form of giving of our time, our talent. It's more than I want to. But I'm committed to surrender all. In the 16th chapter of the book of Luke, Jesus teaches us about stewardship and it deals with your time, your talent, your possession, and your money. But that's what I'm talking about. Your stewardship. We do things and we operate in the principles of God. And God says, yes, okay, you're giving, you're, you're giving, helps dictate your living, but you also have to become a good steward of not just your money, but your time, your talent, and your money. How many of you squander your time? Your talent. Oh, I know there's plenty of people who squander their money. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in that which is unjust is also in much. Somebody better hear me today. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful in that which is much. In Luke 16, 14, and the Pharisees also who were covetous has heard all about these things. And they came to Jesus. They were angry with Jesus because he was talking about who they were and how they loved money and how they were not good stewards of the things of God. In the world, money can serve as a barometer to see how hot you are for God. It also serves as a leveler to determine your maturity. The level of your maturity is the ability to have hope and to handle to be a good steward of your money. 
Seekers of oppression can't handle money. It's because they are oftentimes immature. I talked to a brother who preaches last night, and we were reveling. Prayer call was supposed to be, you know, you, you like to say, you like a prayer call, it's not to be all night long. But we got into this conversation two and a half, almost three hours later, we were still talking. And we were talking about this thing called stewardship. Talking about the revelation of this thing called stewardship. And one pastor said, yeah, I got a family, if you will, that's in the church. And he said, they themselves are millionaires. And he said, all of their kids who are in their 30s have all become millionaires because of the principle of stewardship. You see, see, we, we especially in our community, we don't necessarily teach our kids. So all of us need to do better. Teach our kids how to be better stewards. Some of you don't teach them because you don't know. But guess what that means that you got to learn. I got to learn. So I can teach. Teach my kids. Teach you. But we must learn. Guess what? The wealth of the wicked is laid up for who? But guess what? If you don't know how to be a good steward, he can't give that much to you. Because he don't want you to just blow it and waste it. You want to walk in the blessing and the prosperity of God? Then you got to operate in the principles of God. That's not only giving, but that's also being a good steward. Hmm? See, when someone says there's a sale, some people run out to the sale. It don't matter what they're selling. They can be selling lollipops. And they'll buy the whole thing just because it's a sale. Not because they need it, but because it's on sale. And they burn, they don't almost to burn some people for being a whore. Now I know that ain't going to be all right. We 
or church the gifts. God blesses us that we give. That's why we do our outreaches. We give. But we want to give them not just a handout, but we want to give them a handout. How many of you have given to us? How many of you have said, I'm going to set a seed aside to be a blessing? We, over the years, we have blessed thousands of families with food. Thousands of families for Thanksgivings. Thousands of families for the Christmases. It's been over 30, it's been, it's been nearly 30 years that we've done these outreaches. You say the church ain't that old, it ain't. But God had us doing outreaches long before there was the heart for the world. We've been in ministry over 30 years. We've done these outreaches even when we were traveling at children. And you know, God bless. God has given people to walk with us. Started with just the five that were in our household. Me, Pastor Pam, Bridget, Desiree, and Rhonda. Man, what an incredible thing to say that we had daughters that loved the Lord enough to serve and to give their life. And then one day, because God, God caused me to walk with a dimension of not just focusing in, being inward focused, God called me, called me to go to a prop keepers and work prop keepers. And then God blessed us with two dynamic jewels. It was that day that Elder Mack and Sister Bobby came into contact with us. And they had walked in. Low rider that we ride, we feed. Elder Max sold it into the ministry. Hmm? Elder Max is the body. And you know what? There was somebody else on that that day. They didn't pay much attention. I should not be eliminated by poverty. Some people say, I can't because I, I, I don't have enough. If you give, God will help you and stretch what you have. So it's not to be eliminated by poverty. It's not to be enforced by pressure or manipulation or promotion. It's not to be excused. Sing. Y'all want me to sing for you? 
That guy's supposed to love me. Say, who does this? But some people are sinners. Amen? Guess what? I might not be a sinner, but I'm a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. And when I sing or when I worship, heaven opens up. God is rejoicing.
and there's this infection or whatever is going on inside. Inflammation, mucus, whatever it is. God says, I'm going to purge you of that. But as I'm purging from that, I'm not just working on you, but I'm working on those around you because it's affected those around you. But you don't know it because you've been so hurt. You won't get healed. And somebody say amen. amen. God wants you to get healed. God wants you to get free. God wants to set you free. Jesus is anointed us, and if He's anointed us, He's appointed us to preach this stuff in this hour so that lives will be changed. Do y'all hear me today? We need to let the Lord have his way. See, when we preach this, it's not just to give you an explanation about the text, but to give you an impartation. I want to impart the revelation of God into your life so that you can not only, not only have it imparted, but then you can use it as you move forward. I love you all. And I surrender all. I surrender all. God wants us to move forward, church. But what's the sense? He wants us to have this revelation. So that we can have a transformation. And if we have a transformation, then there can be a manifestation of the promises of God in your life. Hear me. Don't feel bad. I love you. But God wants us to do more for the kingdom. And then we can operate from this whole gap. Or we can say, shed a roof off the side. We're going to we break these shackles off. Somebody ought to hear me today. God wants us to move ahead. Just like if God wanted us to move into a house. But if we move ahead, we got to believe God to keep us. God wants to keep you. God wants you to move to him. God wants to keep you. And you got to believe God to keep you. See, the enemy will try to beat you up to make you think that you can't be kept. But you can. There are three things to consider to see to take to keep. Some people see what they want and they buy what they want, but they never get it. Some people can see it, take it, but they can't keep it. The kingdom is about us moving forward, growing and producing. It's about enlarging our territory, advancing. It's that we will grow and go into transformation and the manifestation of God. See, what the Lord is doing is marvelous in our what the Lord is doing is marvelous in all that we say and do. We need to let the Lord have his way. Y'all need to hear me today. Y'all getting something out of this today? Yeah. Hear me. It's time for us to walk in a new season. And stop chasing that carrot that the devil puts out there before you. And every time you're almost there, he moves you. And so you end up walking around feeling like, I just ain't got it. I ain't this, that, the other. Stop looking at what you don't have and start looking at what you do have. 
to start praising the Lord for what's coming your way. Start living a life and saying, God, I thank you. And see, because God has not forgotten the promises. He made a promise to Abraham. But Abraham, as long as he got in the way, as long as he kept trying to handle God's business, God had to delay it. Until, he, until his body was dead. Until Sarah's body was dead. It ain't supposed to work like that. So God, somebody ought to talk shop. Hallelujah. 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 You both want to stop this movie and just pause. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 9 to 1. For all this I consider in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous, though and the wise, and their works are in the hands of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred, but all that is before me. See, there is the poor, but the wise man in the city. He can deliver, he can deliver them, deliver them with wisdom. But he had the know-how. But no one would listen to him because he was poor. People don't listen to poor people. But he had the answer, but no one would listen because he could not teach them a thing. He could show them. So guess what? Let's begin to shift. Let's knock the dust off our feet. Yes. Let's shake your clothes. Let's stand up tall. And stop walking like you ain't got nothing that you know. The poor man, he had the answer that could save the city, but they didn't want to hear him because he didn't, he, he didn't have the package that they wanted. Let's walk in this. Let's walk in this. Let's walk in the blessing of God. See, there's the gospel and the council, and the council deals with raising your children. The council deals with your marriage. The council deals with your, your, your finances. And the, and the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. We're going to preach all of that. God wants us to operate in this council of God. God wants us to step forward. We're better together. Stop believing the lie that you can go off and you can go off by yourself. That's what the devil wants. You know what lions do? They don't run into the middle of the pack. Wolves, they don't run up into the middle of the pack. They wait until somebody starts to straggle. Somebody starts to fall behind. Somebody starts to moan and complain and act like they're weak. Then, then they become lunch. Hear me. God wants you to move forward in him. And the foundation is to, to be able to live off of the council, off of the gospel. The foundation is, is to say that I am going to be a giver, but I'm also going to be a good steward of what God has given me. you to know. Since the very opening of God, that God wants to transform your minds. Some of our minds need to be washed with the word and with the, with, with, with the water of the word. He needs to wash our mind because so many of us have been beat down. So many of us have had, had our minds contaminated by the things that we put before us. And God wants to bring us to a place of liberty. How many of you are ready to be free? Are you ready to be free? Say, Lord. Lord. I surrender. I surrender. Lord.
your job is to help somebody else. If you got it all together, your job is to be a good example to tell others. Make sure that he, when he's here, he says, make sure, hey, Pastor, how you doing? We, we have to be in relationship with one another. We have to have the right mentality of leaving no man behind. Each of you are important. Each of you are important. But just don't hold it for yourself. Let's get others and let's pull together because we're better together. Is there anyone here who says, I need to give my life, rededicate my life to the Lord? That's you. Let me just lift your hand up. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pray. And I just ask, as we all repeat, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Jesus. That we might be saved. That he gave his riches and took on poverty. That we might be rich. I thank you that Jesus died and rose again on the third day. Jesus, come into my heart, save my soul. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that every curse, every other generational curse is reversed. Lord, I pray that the shackles that have been on people's lives would be broken. I pray that the things that have blinded their minds would be ripped away, that they can live more fervently for you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, let's be let's be on the spot. Let's be here. Let's make sure that we serve and that we that we minister to these families that are coming for the outreach. We have hundreds of families already pre-registered, which means that you know, if there's a, a minimum of three kids per family, some of them will come up here and say they got seven and ten. That's thousands of people already. But it's our job to preach the gospel. It's our job, not just Pastor Ron, Pastor Pam, to preach the gospel. Can we give the Lord that praise? Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that as we do this, Love on each other as we depart from this place. 